Welcome to another episode of Beer and Politics. We are your high fructose hosts, Ryan and Ryan. Today, we're going to be discussing hashtag Me Too and more. But of course, before we do, Madam Brewmaster, what do we have on tap? Today, we have Commodore from Ballast Point Brewing Company. Commodore is a cinnamon raisin stout, an American stout specifically. It is an ale brewed with natural flavors and natural flavors added. So, as a stout, it should be really dark, obviously. It mm. should have a lot of roasty flavors to it, maybe even some chocolatey flavors to it. Uh, it may have a lot of hops, but you're probably not going to taste a ton of hops because there is so much malt in the back of it. So, uh, what do you think? Sweet. Really sweet. Uh, and it perhaps muddles things, uh, to use a word you've, you've used oh, before. Okay. Um, I think it's clear it's, a, it's stout, but it's so sweet. It hides, I think, a lot of some things that you might actually appreciate about the stout. Some of the more subtle uh, nuances of a stout. Interesting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on that muddled bandwagon there yeah. and say I actually think one of the things that it muddles to its advantage mm. is that burnt coffee, mm. burnt flavor mm -hmm. that they unfortunately probably didn't do well as a beer in here. Right. Uh, I do taste a whole lot of cinnamon. Yep. Time. In this beer, uh, it is it is sweet. Um, again. Not a fan when you add flavors to a beer. Sure. Or when you brew it with natural flavors. That's less bad than just adding natural mm -hmm. flavors later, I suppose. They just hit me on both sides. They're like, I'm just going to throw natural flavors all over the place. Um, but it's definitely a stout. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's not a, you know, it's, I mean, I wouldn't be like, oh, this is an IPA. Like, it's obviously a stout. Yep. But, uh, yeah, on the sweeter side, a little muddled. For sure. What do you think, man? I think um, it's a two and a half Prairie Home Companions. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, I actually am going to give this a full half, which is, I believe, two of the California Raisins. Oh. <laughs> so, thank you to Ballast I Point. I see what you did. Yeah. Thank you all to right. Ballast Point. Yep. They don't sponsor us, but, you know. They could. Could. If they wanted to. Um, actually, before we get started, do yeah. we want to talk about a fan of ours? We do. We have this great fan. He just mm -hmm. seems like a really, really smart, really pleasant guy with amazing writing skills. Mm-hmm. His name is Yo Daddy, My Daddy. Mm -hmm. And I know he said Coors. We went with Coors Light just because I, I don't feel like we're tough enough. No. And masculine enough to handle such such a beer of, of such high regard. As regular Coors? As regular old Coors. And Bush. Bushy Mountain Brood. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't get Bush in, in the bottles. I don't think they had them where we went. So Yeah. But, you know, this Coors Light. So here's to you, Yo Daddy, My Daddy. It's true. It turns out to be a man, you only need to get in fights and to have sex with women. Definitely not to think. No. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, I mentioned this to him, when you get in fights with people, it's because they are uh, daring enough to be disrespectful to your face. <laughs> you know, that never happens to us. So I guess we don't get in fights because people are too afraid or too kind. Either way. It sounds like a horrible problem to have. <laughs> Either way, here's to you, my friend. Cheers. Mm. How's that taste? Ah, it tastes like the Rockies. It does. Is that ice brewed? Huh, you know, cold filtered. <laughs> ah, I love it. Mm. All right. Yeah. So we're okay drinking this. We'll drink this just for you. Yeah, there you go. All right. So we are looking at hashtag me too, and I said more. Yes. So I actually want to look at three things. I want to look at hashtag me too. I want to look at no means no. Mm -hmm. And I want to look at ask for consent. Okay. We're calling this a Ryan's rant. <laughs> and in this case, it's this Ryan, not that Ryan. Uh, but he's going to chime in. Sure. So where I want to start is hashtag me too. Okay. So why does hashtag me too exist and what, what is it? What is its objective? Well, I would say it exists. Uh, Alyssa Milano, I believe, is the one that actually brought it into Ooh. popular light as of late. I guess um, she is the boss. Am I right? Hey -oh. um, and, <clears throat> and it exists as a way for, I believe, women to sort of show the world that they also have been affected by either sexual harassment or sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And it's a way, um, I believe, to shed light because women know it, but apparently guys don't. So would you say that it seems to me, uh, seems to be catered more towards men in this way? That men are more of a target audience? <laughs> Perhaps. Okay. Um, so so at, least, at least for the point of illumination. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think women also for the, uh, it, I think it, it's really targeting everyone. It's targeting women, I believe, so that they know they're not alone. Exactly. And that's a great point. So when I first saw this, I said, oh, this is for men. It's to quantify 
sexual mm. assault, sexual harassment for men. So they can see the people in their lives that are affected by this. So that the, it, the people they actually care about. Yes. Uh huh. So that it can be potent. Um, and what I found was it's really not potent, at least to me. And maybe I'm smart, or maybe I'm stupid. I'm not sure which one. And the reason it's not potent is because uh, it seems to mix sexual harassment with I'm going to call it sexual misconduct, which is the idea that you're grabbing women's butts and then violent sexual assaults, uh, mm. i.e. rape, right? And when you combine them together, it loses its potency, at least from my perspective, because if you said uh, after a given age, 100% of women will be sexually harassed, I'd say, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I believe that to be true. If you said after a certain age, 100% of women would face sexual misconduct from a man, I'd say, yeah, probably. If you said after a certain age, 100% uh, of women will be raped, I'd say, whoa, really? <laughs> and so right. the problem is two thirds of like the groupings that I've created here, I'm not surprised by it. And that's sad by the way, but I'm not surprised by it. So what I'm missing is the thing that would surprise me. I don't know how many women have been violently sexually assaulted. I have no idea. So hashtag me too doesn't tell me that. But I will say, uh, you know, to your point that first of all, I like the hashtag a lot because uh, keeping this type of thing top of mind for men is is important. Yeah, yeah. Highlighting it is still important. Even though I assume 100% of women have been sexually harassed, it's good to remind me of that, right? Uh, but this, and you pointed this out, and this actually just came to me this week because I'm a stupid guy, that it does work for women's empowerment. Mm. It's empowering women. And that actually might be the best thing about this because that's why I think we see these real heavy hitters, these men in power falling right now. Yeah, it's not like that happened before. Correct. Look, Trump was elected president like a, less than a year or about a year ago. Mm -hmm. So I really, I'm really in awe of that. And I'm curious how far it can go, mm -hmm. right? Now that women have this, now that they can see other women who are uh, brave enough to, to make this statement, how many more people make this statement? I think there are, there are some challenges to this. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in general, I, I am really impressed with how this is working right now. One of the challenges, I think, actually, that I had I heard, I was listening to a, to a, a radio program mm. the other day. Was it Prairie Home Companion? <laughs> <laughs> it was not. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm not 90. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but um, I was listening to a radio program, and it was a, and it was a couple of them, and I can't remember the name of the show. Mm -hmm. um, but they were talking about part of their frustration with Me Too. Okay. And it was not that Me Too was a thing, or that it was a hashtag, or... Or you know anything like that? It was that um, that they they that they actually had to say me too, you know that like that like women have known forever. Right. If you talk to women, women say they've known forever that this kind of thing goes on, but you know guys really haven't. And and one of the things that they had said was, do you you know I need to say something? I need to tell you that this has happened to me, or uh, you need I need to tell you these things mm -hmm. to to get you know, t to have you believe me or to be sympathetic to that? And well, my answer was yes. Mm -hmm. Because wh why would I be sympathetic to your parents being divorced if you didn't tell me your parents had been divorced mm -hmm. or anything for that matter? So now not being believed is something entirely different. Sure. We should we should do that. We yeah. should believe people mm -hmm. because it's not something with, with great rare exception. Uh -huh. This is not something that people want to lie about because Correct. it's not fun. Right, uh, but n no, yeah, you you should have to tell someone that something's happened to you, if you want them to, if you want if you want them to say, hey, I'm sorry that happened to you. Sure, um, it, you know, kind of, I'm going to counter your point, and I think men largely do know this happens. Hmm. I think we've largely accepted it. I think we think women have largely accepted it. Hmm. Uh, when we talk about sexual harassment and that misconduct, I don't think anybody thinks women have. Uh, largely accepted rape or any, and any sexual sort, violence sort of, of that nature. Assault. Yeah, yeah, no, we it's yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so bringing this up, I mean, it is sad that you have to do it, but if it is to this yes. th to to this extreme, if you want us to notice, you need to bring it up, right? So that's and, the sad you and, know, fact. And the other thing is that right now, we men in general mm -hmm. are in a position where, for whatever reason, yeah. we're finally starting to believe you. Yes. For whatever reason, uh, I don't know what cultural shift changed, what happened, but guys have been like, you know what? I think I will listen to women. Yeah, well, you know, uh, to some extent, um, and I can't put my finger on it though. People are being fired because of money, 
let's not confuse what's happening here. Mm. We didn't fire Matt Lauer because we thought Matt Lauer was bad. <laughs> we fired Matt Lauer because he knew we knew keeping him on would affect ratings and money. And we are not a part of well that corporate entity. But, d- but demographically, yes. <laughs> we are. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. But right, so that is society, uh, the business, the corporate entity mm-hmm. is doing it for that reason. But anyway, I, I, in, I appreciate where Me Too has gone because generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of hashtags. I think America mm-hmm. throws something out there as being clever and smart and then we move along. And so far we haven't moved along. Yeah, and that one's only five characters. Yeah. So psh, even better. Yeah, so kudos to hashtag Me Too. Uh, number two, I want to talk about no means no. Mm. So, I mean, because all this has been building to some extent, right? Sure. And I actually love No Means No, because outside, like among the realm of communication, mm-hmm. verbal trumps everything. Yeah. Verbal communication wins. So it doesn't matter what her eyes are saying. It doesn't matter what her hands are saying. If the words no or stop come out of her mouth, you're done. It's that simple. So I, I've always loved No Means No, mm-hmm. because you can say that to a guy and there's nothing to refute. There's nothing to be confused about <laughs> yeah i didn't understand what no meant you're right no means no the problem with no means no is that it only works if you say it mm. and that's where we get to mm. um, ask for consent right so ask for consent came about uh especially recently with people who use the defense of she was rubbing my back that meant it was okay mm-hmm. right um so interestingly I'm going to ask you, uh, when we say ask for consent, what scenarios are we talking about? Again, you'd be a stupid guy. Maybe you don't know. I I would think that it's in most situations. Okay. Most situations where you are going to engage in some form of what would be considered a consensual sexual act. Okay. Whether it be grabbing some boobs. Okay. Or kissing or obviously sex. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I would think. So it's interesting because if you talk about asking for consent for sex, uh, I think it's a paradox Mm. because it presupposes that you can accidentally uh, rape somebody. (laughs) So it's a paradox. You're asking for consent for something that we don't believe can happen. Like largely, I don't think anybody can say you can accidentally rape somebody, (laughs) right? Sure. So because the argument is, well, she didn't give consent, but I thought I had consent, Mm -hmm. which is then accidental rape. (laughs) <laughs> right? Sure. So I think that's an interesting paradox. So I, I think that was something people were focusing on, but I do think largely we're talking about any type of sexual act. And we haven't really put constraints around what that would be. Uh, but, you know, the challenge I see with this is we've put the onus of changing behavior in society yeah. seems to be, and this is challenges that I think other men have voiced, we put it entirely on the men. Mm-hmm. All right, men need to change their behaviors. Simple. And this is a problem I have really with all three of these things, is it makes everything seem so simple. Mm. I think that's the challenge. And we've talked about this. Behavior is never simple. Changing it. We've talked about marriages fail because of simple behaviors that aren't changed. Uh, People go into financial crisis because of simple changes they don't make. People can't get out of poverty or or fall into poverty. Yeah. Because of simple mistakes, simple yeah. things that we should say are, oh, no, that's right. really simple to change, but, but they don't happen. Yes, and they don't happen. So putting the onus on men to change their behavior and say, there you go. Hey, guys, and I've seen guys say this, right? Is it really that hard not to be an a-hole? And my answer is yes. It clearly is really hard to not be an a-hole. And I think we've overlooked a couple of things, and that's why. Huh. Yeah. Okay, so one is um, people are animals. Yeah, we're people. What separates us from animals, at least in part, is our ability to be civil to each other, yep. purposefully civil. And, and you mean not, not, not animals like, ah, oh, they're just animals, but right. like, like, like biologically, biologically speaking, uh-huh. people are animals. So we, go, we have fought tirelessly to take the animal nature out of ourselves. When we talk about equality, that is, that is somebody restraining themselves. It is somebody in power uh, purposefully relinquishing the power or pretending they don't have it. And where in the animal kingdom do you regularly see that? Equality does not exist in the animal kingdom. Right. So there's a hierarchy, there's roles that people play, and largely as people, we try to get rid of that. And we work really hard in doing that. And so when we talk about 
male dominance and that we, how hard is it to not act like an a-hole? You're asking us to just pretend or relinquish our power, our physical power. And we know that it's pretty hard. And it's not just with regards to you know, women and genders. Uh, same thing we can see in uh, racial problems. Mm -hmm. All right, same thing we see in wealth and poverty problems. We're asking powerful people to relinquish control and pretend they don't have it. And we're dressing it up in a very simple hashtag. <laughs> it's too simple. It's too simple to be that simple. Yes, it's too simple to be that simple. And so that's kind of part one. And by saying men should just change their behavior, we're not talking about what our society and culture tell them. And we're not talking about women's roles in this. And I'm going to be really clear right now. When I say women's roles in this, I am not victim blaming. Mm. All right. I'm going to get into what I am doing in a little bit. So just stay with me here. <laughs> right. I am not doing that. I'm going to say women are not responsible for when they are assaulted or harassed. OK, quote me on that. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about culture. The issue I have with our culture is that we're, we've worked to restrain our animal nature. But then we say as a society, it's OK to be an animal here, but not there. Right. So we say, hey, watch porn, objectify women all you want. Go to a strip club. Go to a strip club all you want. Uh, watch any amount of entertainment that objectifies. From liberal Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. That was the weird thing. I went <laughs> liberal Hollywood. All right. I don't know this guy. Um, I'm mixing beers now, by the way. Which is weird. Um, so, so do this all you want, but not here. Not in public not in those areas. And so that means restrain your animal nature here, but not there. And that's okay. Like it's a switch. We just turn on and off. Now we talk about, you know, culture and where it's okay to do certain things. And then we ignore society. And, and what I mean by that is when do we really start behaving like pigs, men, mm. like animals? Because I know at work, I don't generally. And sure. And by the way, uh, I'm excluding any kind of man of real power in this. Like, because when we right. see the people being taken down, if a man has real <laughs> power, I mean, all, all, it, power it, corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Absolute. It, exactly. It so, goes. It goes in this way yeah. too. It is. It is a form of power. Of course, it happens. Yes. So if you're taking just kind of the average man, the average man at work probably isn't actually harassing women. Uh, he's might maybe verbally, but actually touching a woman is a good way to get fired. Mm -hmm. uh, from a guy who actually doesn't have power. So in those situations, we're able to control it. So when are we not able to control it? I'm going to mention two situations that are not mutually exclusive. Uh, one is when uh, we're socializing mm -hmm. with groups of people. Okay. All right. And what we see when we're socializing, we have a group of men typically and a group of women. We're at the bar. We're at a club. We're at a concert. Um, those are pretty common areas where I've heard women uh, have been touched inappropriately by men. Yep. So why does that happen? Well, we've already said we spend a lot of time fantasizing about objectifying women. Mm -hmm. Then we go to these places where you have groups of guys and groups of women. And largely, the guys and the women in these scenarios seem to be behaving a lot like our entertainment. Mm. And we're being told, don't treat it the same, even though visually things look very similar. We also know that you get guys, among other guys, we're going to behave differently. We know mob mentality exists. Yes. And it takes very smart people and makes them very stupid. And it makes really stupid people even stupider. Yes. So we're, we're now socializing. Once we start socializing, things are different. Things with women are different when they're socializing. And so even if you disagree with me when I say all these visual cues are telling you that this is different, this is the next thing I'm going to bring up. Alcohol. Mm -hmm. So even if they're not, when you drink alcohol, they look very similar. Because alcohol takes away that restraint we're talking about. Yeah, the restraint that we've practiced for centuries upon centuries upon yes. centuries. Uh -huh. Like how long has the, have humans been our species? Right. Alcohol removes all that restraint. All that work we've put in, it removes it. And you know, one of the things I was talking about when we talk about objectifying women, uh, we talk about misogynists. Mm. So they're the classy version of a sexual <laughs> offender. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> that just happened. Yep. James Bond is the <laughs> ultimate misogynist. <laughs> right? Guy, yep. Guys look at James Bond and say, that guy is a cool cat. Uh, he, he is cool. When you watch James Bond movies, uh, he's a misogynist. And you know what? 
He gets to have sex with lots of women. Oh, and they love it. And they don't seem to mind. They love his misogyny. So you take that misogyny, Uh, you move it out to a group of guys, some of which think they're James Bond. Some of the women seem to flock to that James Bond. mm -hmm. You've been drinking. You know what you should be doing? You should be James Bond. You should be James Bond. Mm -hmm. So society is telling us, don't do it here. You can do it here. But then when you go out, you get all these cues telling you, maybe it's okay. Maybe we should be doing it here, too. Why would I let all these guys get away with it? James Bond gets away with mm-hmm. it. I'm looking around. Women don't seem to have a problem with it. Even if they do have a problem with it, if you're drinking, it doesn't look like they do. <laughs> all right? right? And by the way, drinking affects women very similarly. So something th- they may have a problem with, it, they have less of a problem Correct. With. Right? So now they're socializing with other women uh, mm-hmm. where you get mob mentality, if you will, with women. Now you add alcohol. And all of a sudden, things that... Had they been sober, they would call you out on. They don't call you out on. So, and that leads us to the third thing with alcohol. And I actually think this is a really big deal. I, I don't know how often it happens, but I think we should be talking to our young adults very much about this. And this is when you get to the point of drinking where you are either blackout drunk or passed out drunk. Mm. And I can do this very simply for you. If either party in the relationship is blackout drunk, <laughs> Can either party uh, consent? Well, if you're blackout drunk, that means you're conscious. It means <laughs> the words I consent can come out of your mouth, right? Sure. All right. But if you don't remember it in the morning, did you consent? Mm. It's kind of a tree falls in the forest type of situation, right? Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a precarious situation that we're not talking about. And the reason I have a problem with this is because I've actually heard people say alcohol is not an excuse. Sure, it's not an excuse. It's a factor. <laughs> it's an explanation. Yes. And we need to be talking to people if... Because this is about changing behavior. Mm-hmm. If you want to change behavior, these are things we need to be talking about other than men change your behavior. Because I don't think that's really going to work. It's, it's, it's only addressing 50% of the population when it's a cultural and societal issue. Correct. So now you have both either party blackout drunk. What if one is blackout drunk and the other is passed out drunk? Can either party consent? <laughs> Well, the, not the passed out one. But you just said, if either party's blackout, they can't consent too. There you go. There you go. Precarious situation that we're not talking about. All right. Um, and what if one is... No, that's it. That's it, right? Yeah. So we're not talking about those really... Uh, and, and, we, and they sound extreme, but if you talk to young people who are drinking... It's pretty extreme. Yeah, if you said, hey, what, when did you go to bed? Oh, I don't remember going to bed. Seems like we should be talking about that. Because it's really hard to consent if you don't remember going to bed. Luckily, in our in our environment, I think uh, the vast majority wake up the next day saying, I don't remember anything. They said, yeah, this could have happened. Mm. Like, they'll say, I don't remember having sex with this person, but I do remember kissing them. So it's And I remember being attracted to them, so we're going to write it off. <laughs> Which is great if you don't want to be prosecuted. <laughs> right. right? But it's a precarious situation that we're not talking about. So now I'm going to talk about a woman's role in this. Mm. Again, not victim blaming. The women's role is they have the ability to help us change our behavior. And I think it would behoove us to talk about that. And I'll give you examples of what I'm talking about. Let's say you have a roommate, Mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. And you want that roommate to start taking out the trash because they never take out the trash. Mm -hmm. Uh, What's the first thing you would do? Ask them to take out the trash? There you go. Right. Now, a normal person would ask them to take out the trash, just like you. Okay. And probably never ask them again. And then be resentful that they're not taking out the trash. <laughs> right? This is what okay. we're doing in society. Hey, guys, change your behavior. Oh, he didn't change his behavior. Time to prosecute. Time to shame. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, is fairly effective, I'm going to think. I just don't know if it's the healthiest way to deal with this. Mm. Right? So, so they don't, they're not taking out the trash. Let's say you don't want to have resentment. Okay, not, what's not, up? I say maybe, maybe not the healthiest. I don't know if that's the right word. I would say maybe not the most effective. Oh, I think it could be very effective. I just don't uh, think it's healthy. I would say, well, I'd say it's effective in that one case, but not as a way of changing culture. Um, I might argue if, if you're able to put, like, 50% of men behind bars or that shame them out of jobs, then, then it might be effective for the other men. I mean, yeah. you might be able to scare them into it. I don't know. Well, we're looking at Weinstein now, right? Yeah. The Weinstein effect. Right. So I, I think it could be effective. Not really sure. Okay. But that is the only recourse we have today. Mm-hmm. Right? So now... Uh, let's say you ask your roommate, and they're not doing it, but you don't want to hold resentment towards them. What can you do? I ask them again. Yes. Keep asking them. Mm-hmm. You can take the trash out and put it in front of the front door. Mm-hmm. Then they have, 
have to take it, hopefully, and not just move it to the side, mm -hmm. right? But you're going to take an active role in changing that person's behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, if we want to make it more sexual in nature, just to try to connect all the dots. Wear lingerie when you take the trash out. Ah, <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Especially uh, if your roommate's a man. <laughs> well, it depends. Know. I don't know how you swing. Um, let's. Who is responsible for bringing a condom to the party? Assuming you don't want to get STDs, or or if assuming uh, both parties don't want to get STDs or pregnant. I would say whoever doesn't want to get an STD or pregnant is the responsible party. And who's that accessory for, though? It's for the guys. Okay. So some guys bring condoms, mm -hmm. right? Um, responsible guys bring condoms. <laughs> yeah, but I wonder how often they really put them on. We have them. I think there's a lot of guys just waiting for a woman to call them out on. <laughs> I think that is a behavioral thing. So we know we should have them, but if a woman doesn't tell us to put it on, we're happy to roll that dice because condoms suck and we all know this. <laughs> I mean, they don't suck if you're trying not to get pregnant or STDs. For that, they're amazing. They're amazing. But if a woman never calls you out on it, you might just keep that in your pocket. So what do women do? They might say things like, hey, did you bring a condom? They might bring the condom themselves. It's not their accessory. Mm, true. Right? So we're saying, so what I'm saying is if we use either the trash or the condom as my analogy, I'm saying maybe we need to get to a point in society where you touch a woman, like anywhere, at a club, she says, whoa, I didn't consent to that. Or she says, I am okay if you touch me in certain places. <laughs> Providing consent. This is what we're looking for is consistency. What we're lacking right now is consistency. Mm -hmm. You can do it here, but not there, and hope all goes well when everybody starts drinking and socializing. <laughs> and so this isn't to say this is what I'm hopeful for, but we're basically saying nonverbal communication doesn't work. <laughs> only verbal communication will work. And if you want only verbal communication, our culture, our men, and our women have a role to play unless we just want to prosecute or shame the hell out of men. And I think this is something we need to think about if we require verbal communication because it's going to change how we court women. It's going to change our culture. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that if people really recognize that because we're so busy doing hashtags. Hmm. Last call. Uh, I want to give a brief, a brief guide because I have actually heard some men talk about you know, with all these uh, with all these powerful guys getting taken down, all the sexual harassment stuff, I've heard guys say, hey, I don't know how I'm supposed to behave at the office. I'm I don't glad know you I'm brought that to. up because I forgot to. And, uh, oh, yeah. great. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a couple really easy guidelines to follow. Number one, at the office, don't talk about a woman's body. Ah, Just good. don't. Just don't do it. There's no reason to do that. But what if it looks really nice? Oh, then keep that shit to yourself. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And, and, and the thing is, it's like, you know, even, even at the office... Telling someone they look very pretty. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you complimenting? Their brain? No. You're complimenting how they look. Don't do that at the office. And That's just not... assume they didn't dress for you. <laughs> You're right. Um, they didn't I... dress for your attention. Another thing. Don't just talk about sex stuff at the office. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Mm -mm. You don't need to. Mm -hmm. These are Ryan's really simple rules to follow at the office to not be a sexual harasser. Yep. That's good. It's that, like that part, that is simple. Mm -hmm. The other stuff, not as simple, but you know. I like to think it is. I mean, I like to think nonverbal communication can exist and could be clear. But I do recognize it's a challenge because apparently guys are idiots. Well, punching is nonverbal. Very clear. <laughs> very clear. Very obvious. Yeah. But that's great. So I mean, in the meantime, before we really figure out how to do verbal communication, I would think, I would say, think to yourself, how can I not be an a-hole in any situation? That's good. Try to live your life not being an a-hole. Yep. All right. Well, I guess that wraps this up. So, until next time, just beer and politics. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on social media. Links can be found below. You can get all our episodes as a podcast on your favorite platform. Here are a couple videos we think you might enjoy. Until next time, remember, it's just beer and politics. <laughs>